Welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and I am a drone pilot. And for your viewing pleasure today, I have the Hover X1. This is a pocket selfie cam drone and I call it the best vacation cam drone on the market today. Why do I call it the best vacation selfie cam drone there is? Well, uh, watch this. Okay, we've got our little hover drone. I'm going to open it up and power it on. This thing is supposed to be so simple to use. Let's just power it on. Pretty much you place it in your hand and you pick what you want it to do out of all the options here. It's setting itself up. Makes a beautiful sound. Oh, there we go. So it tells me it's in hover mode. So to make it work, I just touch the power and it will hover and... There we go. Explains everything. So here she goes. It should get my face and it should be recording my face. So it's recording me and the device will just hover there. Hopefully my head is not humongous in the screen, but that's the hover mode. So now what I would do normally with a hover mode is you just move around. The drone should stay there and I can do whatever I want, but as long as I stay in the frame of the drone. In other words, if I run this way, I'm out of the frame, but if I walk slow, the drone will hover and track me. So I'm tracked and it's all automatically done. I like that because if I was out on vacation something and I wanted to have somebody else with me, get a photo, do all these things, this thing would just follow you around. And if we want to change positions to get something better in the background, we could, but uh, we want the sun the opposite direction. So we're gonna move this way. And if I want to land this baby, all I do is this. I take my hand, pop it out underneath and it should land. Oh yeah. So that was hover mode, which is pretty sweet. To go to the next mode, there's a little button on top here you press. Zoom out. So there we go, it just said zoom out. So I've got a drone up there. I'm gonna let it go and zoom out and uh, miss that drone. So I'm just gonna hold it a little bit like this at a bit of an angle. Here we go. Meters. Zoom out. So I've got it set for six meters and here she goes. Let it go up, go back six meters as soon as it has me. There we go, it's got me in record, and it's gonna go back six meters. And uh, there we are. It comes back, it's right there waiting for you to put your hand out, put your hand out, and there we go. So we've done that one. What's another one we can do? Let's press this button here and let's see what it says. Follow. Oh, follow mode. I know a lot of people will love this, so let's do the follow mode. Turn that on. Follow. It's gonna go up and it's in follow mode. I see the red light on, so it will follow me no matter where I go. So if I walk this way, turn my back, it should be behind me. I can't see it because I have nothing to monitor it on because I'm not using my phone or anything. So it'll just follow me around and I'll come back over here into the camera so the cameras can see me. And there we go. It's like a, a puppy dog. It just follows you. So walking, walking, it's behind me. <laughs> there we go okay so that's follow mode it's really good if you're on like a, a bicycle or a skateboard or anything like that because it can follow at a pretty high pace want to see what i mean watch i'm gonna run and it should be able to follow me so you start off slow and then go fast so here we go slow little jog okay faster faster <laughs> i got a gopro hat on <laughs> it's still got me and run all the way back Come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> All the way back here. And it's right there, Whew. All right, one of us is out of breath. Let's uh, land this baby. So follows pretty good on a bicycle, skateboard, as long as you're not going super fast. Let's see what the next one is. Press this button. Orbit. Orbit, okay. So orbit, I think I set the orbit to several meters out. So let's try that. So it'll go up, red light should go on. As soon as it has me, it's gonna go out. And it should circle me once, only once. There we go, red light's on, it's recording. I stand here, it's circling me, or I could turn and face it. There we go, it goes around and around and around. 
And when that circle is complete, it is done. So by default, it's at a very minimal orbit, like maybe a meter from you. I like it at a farther orbit like I just did. So that orbit is complete, it will end, and I think it will come back to me. So it stops there, stops recording, and it comes back to me. Get my hand out, ready for it. And there we go. Hand under. Orbit is done. Let's see what the next one is. Bird eye. Oh, bird eye, that's straight up. So for this one, here, let me just lay down. Okay, so here we go. Press the go button. Five meters. Five bird meters up. Eye. Let's see, she's gonna go straight up. And go straight up above me. Come on, red light, red light, where are you, red light? I don't see a red light yet, but she's going. So I'm gonna lay down on the ground. See if I get my GoPro to look straight up at it. There it is. Here I am. So that's bird's eye. You can go higher if you want. Just set it in the settings. And then uh, it should come back down. And we're coming down. It's looking at me and the camera went up. So she's done. All right, so bird's eye is done. And uh, let's land it. Whoa. <laughs> okay, what's the next one on here? Custom snapshot. Oh, this one here, I set it up for a photo. So let's try that. It's going to take a photo. So let's go like this. Continue. Snapshot. It's going to take a photo. So I want it to take a, a photo. Let's try this way. Go this way. It will keep taking photos until I put my hand out, I believe. So let's go this way. Take another photo. Uh, let's go over this way. I'll go farther away. Farther away now. Now take a photo. Farther away. Come on, photo. I've stopped moving. Okay, so there we go. We got a pile of photos. Let's bring my hand under. And land it. There we go. So you can keep on taking photos. You just keep moving around and it will keep taking photos until you come back and put your hand under it. So those were all the modes on the hover drone. Now I don't know how much battery power is remaining. I'll try the app really quick. Uh, see if I can get anything out here with the battery that's remaining. So you just tap on the hover app. There we go. We're going to connect my app to the drone via Bluetooth. It says you are connected to hover. Oh, it did it automatically. Okay, that's cool. So if you look at my app, you have a bunch of videos here where everybody who owns this can upload it. Then you have hover right here. Uh, do not fly. Yes, yes, got it. So you have your settings and everything else. This is how I set everything up in here. You also have your modes. There they all are there. We went through them all. So we have all that, and then you have you. There I am, Captain Drone, and all my cool things here. But uh, what I'm going to do is go back to Hover. See where it says Sound Recording? I'm going to hit that. Turn on Sound Recording. Allow access to microphone on. Hover X1 would like to use your microphone. Okay, so that's good. So now, what I want it to do is I want it to hover. It makes a racket, but apparently you can then talk into your phone and you won't hear the sound. So let me go in to find out what mode it's in. Or let me just change modes. Hover mode, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna get it to hover. Hit the go. Here we go. So red light, let's see if you get me. Come on, turn on. Hopefully I have it correctly. Uh, if I do, I should be able to talk into the microphone on my phone. So I guess it's at the bottom. So you probably can't hear the sound of the drone anymore, all the buzzy sound or the sound of my Mini 3 up in the air. I believe it's supposed to filter that all out and you can walk around and uh, just have beautiful audio without all the background noise of this baby. So that'd be pretty cool on vacation. I believe that's how it works if I did it correctly. And the last thing to show you on the app is the hover settings. This is how I set everything up. So for each item, like say when I went to hover, I'll click on hover. You see shooting mode was video, duration continue on, off, and I, I filmed at 1080p 60 frames per second. If you want to see what it looks like at uh, 2.7K, I'm just going to switch it to 2.7K 30 frames per second. Switch to hover mode, switched, and we can do it again. Now I'm gonna increase the resolution. So I'm gonna tap on the top. We should be in 2.7K. So this will be a higher resolution video from this thing. Highest it can possibly do. So this should be 2.7K video resolution vice the 1080p 60 frames per second I was previously showing you. So this is 2.7K at 30 frames per second. I'm just gonna walk around so you can see what the video looks like, what it sees the video looking like, and what 
how well it works. It's better to get farther away from it when it's in hover mode so that you're more in the image. So this is 2.7K, should look pretty good. And of course, if you wanna make sure all the videos you took worked, you click on hover album and, oh, it's gotta to connect to that, uh, wanna join. And there we go, we'll connect to it again. And it's gonna download all the video and photos I took to the phone. I don't think I should have did that because it might take a little while and I'm draining my battery, but there we go. Hello access, yes, yes. So there we go. There's all my pictures and uh, photos that were taken from this baby and it looks good. And you can download them all onto your phone. So it's pretty sweet. And then you can send them out to family and friends while on vacation. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna go back to indoor Steve. Now you might've guessed from watching that video that this tiny little pocket cam weighs under 250 grams and it does. Here's the weight right here, check it out. Doesn't weigh very much. Other thing you probably realized, wow, Steve, you got that up flying pretty quick. You powered it on and you went flying. That's because there's no GPS in this thing. There's no GPS, no compass calibration required. You just power it on and it flies. But then you're wondering, how does it know to come back to where it took off from? Because only drones with GPS can do that. Well, it uses a very advanced VIO position tracking system. So that's how it works to find you as a human or any human you desire. And it stays with you and follows you and knows the distance from you. Also in that little video, you saw me using the phone app and I could do some pretty cool things. And I bet you're wondering, can I preview the video coming out the front on my phone so I can see it live and then adjust my position and everything and get in the frame? Yes, you can. You can see it live on your phone. You can also fly it with your phone. You can move it left, right, up, down as many ways as you wish, but it's not as good as you might think. You really need a joystick for that. So on your phone, not that great, but it can be done. And now let me tell you some specs about the Hover X1, the camera up front, as you saw in my little video. The max resolution is 2.7K at 30 frames per second, and it doesn't look half bad. When you go down to 1080p, 60 frames a second, that's what I recorded most of the video in, because this entire video is at 60 frames per second, it looks, eh, okay. It also has a 1080p HDR, high dynamic range mode at 30 frames per second. I tried that, and it looks okay in certain scenes. So if you leave it on and the lighting is kind of weird, it may not look as good as you expect. So I just use it when you need it. All the videos you take are stored inside. There's 32 gigs inside and you can format it. Also, when you plug this into your computer, there's a little USB-C on the side. You don't have to power it on. It just acts like an external thumb drive. You plug it in and it reads off the memory. Very good at downloading photos and videos. Or you can do like I did in the video and download them directly over Bluetooth to your phone, send them off to family and friends. Now the specs do say that the wind resistance for this little guy is 28 kilometers per hour. That's about 17 miles per hour. I don't know how good the video would look if this flew in strong winds like that because when it tries to stay still, you saw it in the video, it will bounce around with the wind. So I'm not really sure how good that would work with that amount of wind, but the specs say you can fly it in that amount of wind. Now for those of you thinking, hey, I want to fly this really high. It has a max height of 15 meters, which is about 50 feet. And if you want to fly it really far it's got a max distance range of about 30 meters which is about 100 feet now my version did come with the charging hub and two batteries and i will say the batteries charge up quite quickly they're about 30 minutes you put two batteries in charge it up 30 minutes you're ready to go fly again it's pretty good speaking of the batteries I was out in the cold and I will tell you right now, the batteries do not last long in the cold. That entire video review you just saw, I had to use two batteries to complete it because by the time I got to bird's eye view, well, the battery was pretty much dead and I had to replace it. But in warmer weather, like when you're on vacation in the Caribbean, you'll probably get a pretty good flight time. So now let me show you what comes in this box and then come back to me and I'll tell you the good points and bad points about this little guy. Check it out. This is the shipping box your Hover Air X1 comes in. Opening that box, you'll find your Hover Air and accessories. This would be the box for the Hover Air X1, and this would be the box for the battery charging hub, as well as the extra battery. Now let's get on to the Hover X1 and open the box, and oh my god, there's another box. Opening that box, we're presented with another box that contains the Quick Start user manual. And then we have to get through one more helpful card, and then we're at the Hover Air X1. The hover is very small in size and arrives in a folded state, but you can unfold it. Everything you need to control the hover is right here. Let me explain. This large button is the power button. It turns the hover on or off. It also acts as the start my flight mode button. This black button is the flight mode button. Each time you press it, you'll select a different flight mode. 
If you hold it down, you'll then be able to change the flight settings for each mode. When you see a light here, you have selected hover mode. This one would be zoom out mode. This one is follow mode. This one is orbit mode. This one is bird's eye mode. And this last one is custom mode that you get to select within the menu settings. Above the camera is the indicator light. When it switches to red, recording has commenced. Here we have a side view of the Hover Air X1. You can see the protective cage around the motors and the motors are brushless. For bottom sensors, you have an optical flow surrounded by two infrared height finders. On the side, you have a USB-C port that acts as a charging port or a data port. The camera mount does have vibration dampening, which does help with the wind. The batteries are lithium ion batteries, two cell at 1050 milliamp hours. Now, if you get the charging hub, it comes with a USB cable that you plug into your power supply and it can charge up two batteries. The charging hub will charge up the batteries faster than if you tried to charge them in the drone itself. Total weight of the Hover Air X1 is only 129 grams. And finally, a soft carry pouch is included. Place your hover in it, any extra batteries, and you're off to the races. All right, you're back to me. Now the good points. It's small, it's portable, it's under 250 grams. I love that they include this tiny little bag. I love that the batteries are tiny in size and they include the charging hub. That is really good, all a bonus. Second thing, it works. It's not a gimmick, it actually works. There's no trickery or anything like that. It works, it will find you. Maybe if you're in a crowd of people, it won't find you, but if you're out like I was, it works perfectly. Other good point, as I mentioned, it's probably the best vacation camera you could take with you because check this out, it's so small, you go on the beach any place you pop this up you do your filming or when you go see different sites no matter where you are even in hover mode you can have people around you because it's just going to stay where your hand was go straight up and then film you and you can walk around show the sites behind you everything else talk i love that you can hook it up to your phone and you can talk into your phone when you're at a distance so you don't have the noise from the crowd and everything around you and it goes straight onto the video it's really good other thing i love is that the files are not big on here when it takes videos or photos they're not big and they look pretty good quality well not the greatest quality but but pretty good for what you get and with that you can send them off to family and friends they're not large so you, you can easily send them on your phone and use very little data and finally there's no remote this is perfect perfect for vacation the last thing you want to do is go on vacation you have to have a drone and a remote there's no remote with this just your phone and you always have your phone with you so it's bonus now if i had to pick some negative points the only ones i would pick is the flight time for the battery the size and what you're doing I didn't find it super long flight time, so you'll need two, three, or four batteries if you're going on vacation. Other negative might be the wind. It's pretty tiny, so it's gonna get bounced around in the wind a lot. And the image stabilization up front, I should mention it's not a three axis gimbal. It's basically electronic image stabilization. So it tries to stable when it moves like this and like this, and it does a really good job with the sensor inside. However, it can only do so much of a job. So the windier it is and the more it's bouncing like this, you're gonna see it in your video. And finally, the camera quality. So at 1080p 60 frames per second, I didn't think it was that great. At uh, 2.7k, I thought it was better. 2.7k looked pretty good, but that's only at 30 frames per second, and that's all you need for vacation time. Where I find it a little bit in the negative side is that for that type of camera and which you get the price. It is a bit on the pricey side, although right now with Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's on sale, so it'd be a good time to pick it up. But the normal price is a wee bit on the expensive side. So with all that said, I, I think it's pretty good. You know, I'm not a fan of Zero Zero Robotics. That company is a little bit on the negative side for most people. They've done some shady things in the past, but I'm not gonna talk about the company here. I'm just gonna talk about the product. The product is Ace, just the price is a little bit expensive but if this is something you need for vacation or vlogging or anything like that it's pretty good and uh, with all that said the links are below go check it out i believe it's on sale right now if you're watching this uh, as cyber monday's on or the week of cyber monday it should be on sale it's probably gonna be on sale again at christmas so you can check it out then but uh, yeah, links are there. Go check out, see if the price is something for you for what you get. Oh, and I should point out on the bottom, I went through all that and didn't even tell you. You do have sensors on the bottom, obviously. You've got optical flow and you have some landing sensors. That's how it knows when your hand is there and all that other good stuff. Anyways, I probably showed you that in the unboxing. But for now, I say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in future videos with many more cool product reviews like this. Till then, I say bye.